Hi, it's Camila and in this video I will be showing you my very simple technique how I achieve this traditional watercolor effect in Krita. This time I'm drawing Bella Hadid in Magla. That was a very quick portrait practice as I haven't drawn a lot of realistic or semi-realistic portraits lately, but I'm getting back into it. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed to my channel so far. I really appreciate it and I hope you were able to learn a thing or two or if you would just enjoy the painting process. If this is your first time seeing one of my videos, please consider subscribing. I post a new video every two or so weeks. You can click the bell to be notified whenever I upload. Recently I have also unlocked the community tab, so I've been posting some of my drawings there. You can also go to my Twitter for that as well. Now let's start with the actual video. I will explain what I do to achieve this watercolor effect. First of all, I always start with a sketch. So whatever you would like to do, just create a new layer to start off your sketch. I also have a separate video on how to manage the layers and how to create the sketch. I have also one more video that explains all of the useful tricks that I use to create my sketches, so you can check them out as well. The first tip I have for achieving the watercolor effect in your drawings or in your paintings is to import a layer of a watercolor paper texture that you can get from different websites. I usually use Unsplash and I will link them down below so you can get an access to some free textures that you can use for all of your drawings. Then I click the import layer option from the menu, you click layer and then import layer. You can select the one that you want to have as your background and then you can use that as your paper texture. It gives more dimension to the painting and it looks more realistic. Another thing is that Krita brushes are usually textured naturally, so the brushes are already designed to work like watercolor brushes, so they already have a little bit of texture to them. But to create a more realistic looking painting, I usually just import a different texture for my background. I know Krita also has some um, patterns that you can use as your background texture, but I prefer to use a photo of the paper that was done professionally, so it looks more natural and more realistic. What you can also do, you can manipulate that layer, you can make it a little bit lighter, a little bit darker, so whatever suits your painting, you can do that as well. For most of my paintings or drawings, I usually opt for a sepia color sketch or line art, as in this example. I have three different layers, one for the sketch, one for the light line art and then the other one for the darker colors of the line art. So the first layer of the line art is more delicate, a little bit lighter, usually in a sepia color. And for this particular painting, I decided to also include a separate line art layer. Here I wanted to have more contrast between the lines and also to have the character pop out more. Now depending on your style you can do different things with your sketch as you would do in a regular watercolor painting. You can start shading a little bit on your line art or sketch layer to create more dimension from the get-go and then you can apply the colors like you would normally apply them traditionally. But since this is digital art, we don't have to worry about the line smudging or anything being disrupted by the watercolor. We can try to shade. You can create more shadows in your sketch if you would prefer to. 
if that is what you want to do. In this case, I decided to have a little bit of shadows already going on before I start applying colors to this painting. Now for the most important part, how to create the watercolor effect. What I always do is I create a new layer and then I set the layer mode to multiply. This layer mode makes the colors translucent so they will blend nicely with the sketch underneath and also with the background if you do decide to select a texture for your background. So the multiply layer will just nicely be laid on all, the, all of those layers and if you create more of those layers then they will be even more saturated. Then when you start applying the colors, as you can see my brush mode is set to normal so if you want to paint the whole surface you can do that with your brush being set on normal so everything will be with the same amount of color and nothing will be changed. Then when I want to create more shadows on the same layer then I change the brush mode to multiply as well and in that way I can create shadows with the same color or sometimes I select a little bit darker color to create the layers on the same layer that I've painted the base color on. You can always go back to your brush setting and change it to normal back and then if you do make any mistakes with your multiply brush option you can always go back to the normal mode and then just correct your mistakes using the same color as you started with. So setting the layer mode or the brush mode to multiply makes it very easy to achieve shadows to create all of the dimension in the painting. Another important thing is that I usually use only this one particular brush for my watercolor paintings. This is my favorite one, I use it a lot. This is my most used watercolor brush in Krita. As you can see, you can create a lot of different types of lines with that brush, like you would normally with your watercolor brush on paper. So if you do a very delicate stroke, then the line will be thinner, but also more concentrated if you move your brush very slowly. Or also if you do press your brush, or in this case, the pen on your tablet, that color will get spread out and you can also achieve a lot of different kind of, kinds of effects. So I would advise just to practice using this type of brush to see what the lines look whenever you press the pen in, on your tablet and just practice different types of lines that you can get with this type of brush. Of course, there are a lot of different options in Krita. Uh, this one is my favorite because you have a lot of control over what you're doing and also you can get a lot of different kinds of effect with this one brush so that's why this one is my favorite. You can always change the size of the brush at the top of the brush menu so you can experiment with that as well. For all of the details you can size the brush down and for all of the um, splashes of color you can size the brush up and in that way you will get different kinds of effects. I also like to create different layers for different parts of my painting just to make sure that I don't make any mistakes and if I do it would be easier to correct that. So for example for the face I can create a different layer for the makeup or for the hair, for the clothes and so on. Sometimes I do everything on one layer, sometimes I use multiple layers, so it depends what I want to do or how I feel about the drawing. If you did enjoy the video, please consider subscribing and also check out all of my other videos for more tutorials and tips for Krita and also some other time-lapse paintings that I have. Once again, thank you so much for watching and see you in my next video.
Bye.